In this video, we're going to take a look at how logical shifts and rotations are actually used in ARM. So we're actually going to take a look at some practical examples and see how these instructions actually work and be able to demonstrate that they do actually do, as I said, multiplying by two and dividing by two and make sure that these results are actually truthful. So to start off with, let's look at a very simple example. We'll do something similar to what we did in the previous video where we were working on the binary numbers. So what we did was we had 10 and we did some shifts on it. So we did some shifts to the right, some shifts to the left, and we'll take a look at what those results end up being. So to start off with, I'm gonna go ahead and move the value 10 into register zero. Once we have done this, what we're going to do is we're going to do, uh, let's do a logical shift to the left to start off with. So the way that we do this is we do LSL, we type in the register that we want to shift, and then we're gonna indicate how many times we want to shift. So what I was demonstrating in the video previous was that we could shift one time to the left. And if we shift one time to the left, it was the same as multiplying by two. With ARM, we can actually specify to shift multiple times if we want to. And the way to think about that is that it's the same as just multiplying by two repeated amount of times. So if I shift to the left twice, what I'm doing is I'm multiplying by two twice or multiplying by four, right? If I shift three times, then I would be multiplying by two three times, right? So that's the idea of what we're looking at when we're saying how many times we would like to shift. So if I want to shift everything to the left one time, which would be the same as multiplying by two, I simply indicate that here. Now, something that's interesting about this is that you can actually use this to shift by a variable amount, right? So I could put in like a register like R1 and say shift by the number of times that's inside of the register R1, right? So there's ways of being able to combine this together to be able to utilize like a variable amount of shifting. So that's one thing that you're able to do that I just want to note here. So with that being said, let's take a look at what this actually does. So we compile and load. The first load is going to put 10 inside of this register. And we're just gonna go ahead and change this to decimal. Just that way we can see it a bit easier. So you can see that we have 10 here. The next time that we move through, we do our shift, which changes it to 20. And as you can see, it does as I said it would. It multiplies it by two. And just to continue on with this, we'll go ahead and do a rotation to the right and just, um, well, we'll do a shift to the right rather and see what that ends up doing. Now, what I'm anticipating this is going to do is it's going to shift to the right by one, bringing us back to 10. And let's just see if that actually does happen. So we'll go ahead and compile one load. We start at 10, we end up at 20. The next shift brings us back to 10. So you can see that generally this is working the way that we expect it to. So this is nice and simple, nothing too complicated here. Now, one thing that we can do is shifting that's quite interesting and unique is that we can combine it with the move operator to do a move and a shift at the same time. This is a really useful sort of thing to be able to do. Um, to give you an example, maybe I don't want to shift R0. Maybe I want to store the result of multiplying R0 by two into register R1. So just to demonstrate what that would look like currently with their current instruction set, I'll just go ahead and get rid of this line. Um, what I'm saying I want to do is I want to move, you know, R into R1, the value R0. And then what I want to do is I want to do a shift on R1 by one. So what I'm doing is I'm preserving the value of R0, right? So that way the value of R0 doesn't actually change. R1 stores that value instead. Now, rather than having to do the move and shift in separate instructions, we can actually do them together. So what I can do is I can add on a third piece here. I could say LSL one, just like this. What this is going to do is it's gonna move the value stored in R0 into R1, and then it's gonna shift it by one. So let's take a look at what happens. So we get 10, and then you can see we get 20 directly. So you can see that it does that shift immediately, right? So we don't have to worry about it happening, you know, multiple times, right? We, we don't have to do it in multiple separate instructions. We could do it all in one instruction instead. So this is something sort of unique about the shifts that we haven't seen with other sorts of instructions so far. So that shows you how the logical shifts work inside of ARM. I'm gonna end off here just by showing you a rotation, just that way you're able to see what that ends up looking like. 
So the instruction for rotation is, of course, ROR, like we said. And of course, we could do some examples of shifting by one, for instance. Um, although we should pick a number that will actually flow over into the, the remaining you know, ends that it goes over to the left-hand side. Um, let's see, I think a value perhaps like, um, well, a value like 15 should definitely do it, right? Because we would have all ones on the right-hand side. So let's go ahead and give that a try and see what happens. We get 15, and you see when we overflow over, we get this massive number here. This one, it actually helps to look at the hex to see what ends up happening, right? So you can see that we have eight as our first hex value, which is one, zero, zero, zero. So you can see that the one shifted over to the front. We still have seven on the right-hand side, which implies that we have, you know, all of the ones remaining except for the one that was on the end, right? We have zero, one, one, one. And then on the other hand, we have one, zero, zero, zero on the left-hand side. So you can see how this rotation is generally working. It is doing sort of the idea of what I was saying would happen with it. So this gives you an idea of how the rotations work. And I want to note as well that you could do the same thing with rotations that we did with, um, with moving, right? Um, we can put it into the move instruction and we can rotate as loyal as the move, right? So the same sort of idea as what we did with these shifts before. So this demonstrates to you how rotations and shifts work in ARM. So you now understand what these operations do, what their value is, and how the instructions can be used in ARM. In the next video, we'll take a look at some other instructions through ARM and we can get a better understanding of some more advanced things that we can do with this programming language.